The information featured in this program is general in nature and therefore should not be relied upon. Before making any investment, insurance or financial planning decisions, you should consult a licensed professional who can advise whether your decision is appropriate for you. On Australia's Business Channel. Welcome to Your Money, Your Call. Hello and welcome to Your Money, Your Call. I'm Diana Dorohy. Well, the weird and wonderful world of alternative investments throws up all sorts of opportunities, from car spaces and banknotes to taxi licences and alpacas. Tonight we have a look at two interesting and diverse investment and ideas in vending machines and classic cars. There's really no way to link the two, so I won't. I will, however, introduce tonight's guest, Luis Navares, General Manager of Ostway Vending, one of Australia's top five vending machine companies, and Rory Johnston, Managing Director of Classic Throttle Shop in Sydney. So if you're a car enthusiast or wannabe, or perhaps you want to know more about investing in vending machines, then please give us a call. Our phone lines are now open, 1300 30 34 35. Or if you prefer, you can email us at yourcall at skynews.com.au. Gentlemen, welcome to the program. Thank you. One thing that I perhaps could have said about uh, cars and investment machines, it's one asset is seemingly everywhere and the other one is rare and hard to find. We'll kick off with vending machines. Louise, uh, good to have you on the show. Let's give us a quick overview of the types of vending machines out there. There are mainly three types of, of vending machines, what we call traditional vending. Uh, it's a top of mind in, in, in the vending uh, industry, in the vending world. It's electronic machines, snacks, drinks, drinks only. Uh, it's, the, it's the machines that most uh, people use and it's the one that it's, uh, yes, uh, defined as the classic one. Then we have uh, another interesting segment, it's called bulk vending. Uh, these are mechanical machines and they usually sell uh, bulk confectionery by the handful, um, nuts and toys, novelty toys as well. There's, a, there's another uh, big uh, segment, it's called amusement machines. And in this group we have um, machines that have some gaming element, pinballs, um, cranes, toys. It can or cannot be electronically operated, uh, but those are right now the main three, three segments in vending. Now, we had a story in the news today that uh, we're the fattest nation on earth. I'm guessing that food is probably the most popular of all three vending machines that, that you just mentioned. Well, let's go through some average returns. Let's talk about uh, investing in vending machines. We've got a graphic uh, that shows uh, the, the kind of returns that you can, can expect. And let's just take us through this example, Louise. 100 bulk machines, if you buy them, for example, let's say the outlay $118,000, revenue per month $3,000, cost of the goods, i.e. filling it each week or each, sure. each week or each month, $600, gross profits, you're looking at $2,400 per month or $28,800 per annum. Now this is the fascinating thing, the, the uh, return on investment there, 24.4%, then after 9 to 12 months, you can be getting returns of 32%. That is, that is phenomenal. Correct. That is correct. Just how realistic is this for a first time investor? It is very realistic. It is very realistic. Uh, the 9 to 12 months is related to the learning curve where the machine owner, we call them operators, um, will learn about their machine locations, will fine tune their machines to the product that people really want to have. And uh, it, it is very simple and very straightforward to go to, to outstanding returns in this industry. How popular is it? Uh, people clued up to the, those kinds of returns? Because I think if, if people knew, um, we'd probably, I was going to say, we'd have vending machines everywhere, but they're already everywhere. We'd have even more. That's correct. Now, the part of, of the vending machines that you see every day is only the tip of the iceberg. There are many, many machines in staff rooms in areas that are not of public access. So it, it is, there's, there's a lot of machines out there, but the opportunities to place more machines are ever growing every day. Because of what? Because we're building uh, more office new, blocks? New or? buildings, uh, new developments, uh, buildings nowadays considering their plans in the original plans, uh, vending aisles, vending areas, vending coves. So architects and, and, and engineers, they already have vending in mind when they're planning. We've got an email here from uh, Carmel in Paris.